And uh, so you one might wonder, okay, that's interesting. This a different circuit behaves in a different way. Uh, so, so, um, so given that this is a lower division class, and um, we don't have to cover everything in circuit, so we actually don't have time to cover everything in circuit. So, given that both this and this gives you resonance behaviors, um, what's the benefit of um, doing working with this circuit, let's say in a lab setting, rather than working with this circuit? Like, why not this circuit? Why not stick with it? Why not stick with what the textbook covers? Uh, experimentally, the one big thing that makes a difference is how the role of the register. So here, the resonance behavior shows up in current. So you might be, um, and, and in order to measure the current, you do need to measure the current uh, voltage across the register to calculate the current that way. Uh, so in terms of kind of measuring things, um, you, you want the register to be reasonably large. However, when you think in terms of power dissipation, so register gives you what's called a damping. Uh, so it's what um, kind of, it's what makes things oscillate not as well. So, and the amount of damping you have in an oscillator that determines the sharpness of resonance peak. Your textbook has a picture of it. Uh, so if you look at the uh, textbook resonance in an AC circuit, uh, they have this picture of it. So this is the resonance, and uh, it has some width. And this width, how broad that width is, how narrow that width is, that's associated with how much damping, how much power dissipation there is. And when that R is large, that makes it that makes this width broader. So when you are working with that, uh, do they have expression for? Yeah, they talk about the Q factor, quality factor. And you see it here. The quality factor becomes lower when the R is uh, greater. And um, what that means is when you are working with a s series LRC circuit, you have to balance these two things, two practical things, that in order to be able to measure that resonance behavior and give it proper uh, interpretation, you um, want this R to be reasonably large. But as this R gets larger, it'll make your Q factor, quality factor lower. So the kind of resonance you see won't be as uh, sharply picked it'll be more kind of less of a sharp resonance. And that's a, a trade-off you're just going to have to have with this. And that's a trade-off that uh, you don't have to have in the LRC circuit that you saw me draw below. So in this circuit, when you go through the same similar analysis your textbook does, um, so, so I, I guess actually I can do the analysis here. So, um, so, so when I have this uh, expression for I naught and the the quantity that I'll be measuring for my resonance behavior will be this delta v. And uh, let's say when I do that measurement, I expect that delta v to depend on uh, the driving angular frequency in something like this some kind of resonance and we'll expect to see this peak at omega equals 1 over square root of LC and at that resonance I'll actually see the full uh, power supply voltage V0 and I might think about okay at half a maximum at the value where I have a V0 over 2 um, what would be the frequency that uh, away from this resonance. What would be this delta omega? And I can look at it here. So in terms of the current, what that would mean is this current would have to be halfway be between the maximum current, which would correspond to uh, the V over V naught over R and the, the minimum current, which would correspond to zero. So it would have to be V naught over 2R. That's what we are looking for in terms of the current that's flowing through the circuit. That will give me this condition. So let's look at it. I have V0 equal to V0, so I can cancel those out. 
So I'm setting this equal to 2R and see what kind of frequencies you get. So I have 2R is equal to square root of R squared plus omega squared L squared over 1 minus omega squared L C squared. Okay, so to get rid of square root, square both sides, 4R squared is equal to R squared plus uh, omega squared L squared over 1 minus omega squared LC squared. And instead of doing this algebra by hand, let's use a sage math. So uh, let's declare some variables. We're going to be using R. Uh, and instead of omega, let me call it omega squared because um, I want to treat this uh, omega squared as like x. Uh, so actually, let me just define that as x, and I'll just put in x where I see omega squared. Um, and I need L and I need a C. Okay, those are my variables, and my equation will be four r four times r squared is equal to r squared plus omega squared, which is x times. L squared divided by 1 minus omega squared, which is x, times L times C squared. Okay, that's my equation. I can solve for that equation for x, and it'll know to um, uh, treat everything else as a known quantity. And I should get two solutions because, you know, it's quadratic. And um, let's see, will it... It looks super complicated. So, but I, I think I can write it down and make some sense of it. So, let's write down um, our omega squared. Um, you get two solutions. I think I can write them both kind of together. I have uh, one six times uh, six, and then this r squared c plus l and then this is what i'm looking at i see this and this expressions are the same except for minus and plus here so i'm gonna write plus minus square root of 12 uh, c l r squared plus l squared All of that divided by um, this is denominator. So C squared L R squared. So as you look at that, I think there's a, a let me do a little bit of a human simplification so that it's easier for me to kind of attach meanings to things. I think the six is kind of redundant. Let me um, and let me absorb it into the thing. Then I have for the first term, I got um, so sixes cancel out. And let me for the first term, let me simplify with the denominator as I write it down. R square cancels out with that. C cancels out one of the C squares. So I have one over L C as um, leading part of that omega squared expression. And then I have plus, uh, let me write the second term, uh, there's going to be some shift in frequency apparently. Uh, else cancel and I have 1 over 6 r squared c squared, okay. Interesting. Um, and finally, uh, plus minus, and let me write this out. So 6 coming in, so I'm going to just write everything under square root. Then uh, 6 being squared, 36, um, so that combined with the 12 will be, actually, uh, let me just write it out. It'll be 12CLR uh, squared plus L squared over, and then 6 is squared, so 36, and then all these things are squared, so it'll be C to the fourth power, L squared, R to the fourth power. Yeah, and this is what I want you to mainly demonstrate. 
when you look at this, so you know, this plus minus, this is basically what you're giving you this right side and the left side of that delta omega. And as you look at that, um, look at this expression here and see how this behaves as r goes to infinity or as r goes to zero. Those are kind of two limiting behaviors that's uh, useful to look at. And um, this whole combination of quantity um, goes to zero as r goes to infinity because you have this r to the fourth power in the denominator that overwhelms everything there. So as r goes to infinity, this thing that determines the width goes to zero, which means at larger uh, resistance values, your resonance becomes more sharply picked. That means your um, the kind of the Q factor, um, it the quality factor increases with increasing resistance. And um, in a circuit, it's always easier to add more resistance. So if you can achieve achieve a higher Q factor, sharper resonance by having a Having a um, having a larger register that, uh, in practical terms, kind of easier circuit to build, easier circuit to build and analyze. So this uh, alternative circuit, which you can only analyze using complex impedance, it's a uh, um, it, it it has that practical benefit that when you are building it in in the lab with a real circuit that you can use uh, easier values of resistances to work with. Because as you use those larger resistances, your Q factor will increase. So you will see a more prominent uh, resonance uh, behavior. So, so that's the kind of the long analysis of this. Uh, I, I guess when I edit it, I'll probably have to break it up. I'll just uh, you know um, do this uh, working out part on its own, then I think it'll be kind of reasonable length that people can look at to see um, that's, uh, that's going to um, um, kind of demonstrate analysis of any kind of uh, arbitrary uh, LRC circuit uh, just by using simple technique that's uh, comparable to adding registers in parallel and in series. And the longer bit about the practical advantage of this, I'll just put it off to like a second set of videos. So.